Okay, let me just tell you about my last two days at work. Uh, which, by the way, were my last two days at my job that I've been at for 21 years. And I love being a paramedic, but it's not always glitz and glam. And excuse me, I'm driving, so I have to keep my eyes on the road. <clears throat> but with coronavirus in the air, everybody's stress level is very high right now. So we're all snapping at each other and we're all um, just really on edge. So it's a stressful time for EMS and some of us don't have the proper equipment and we have to um, reuse our N95s, which, you know, they have figured out a safe way for us to do that. You know, obviously, of course, if we're exposed to a positive case, we get a new one. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> but yesterday on my, well, these are my last final two days. Yesterday, I started my day off with a person that completed suicide in the morning. And as you know, um, from previous videos that I have made, I lost my husband to suicide. So anytime that I get a call for a suicide, it is not easy um, to deal with. But I, I push it in <clears throat> and I muster through because I'm a professional and I have to help these people. So, with that being said, I find it hard when I have a young widow who was around the same age I was when I lost my husband, bawling her eyes out, <clears throat> and with her kids, even worse. Um, so I had I was put in a position where I I you know I did what I had to do, and I wanted to just pack it up and go, but I was put in a position where I had to actually um, play therapist. And I wasn't happy about it, but for what it's worth, I'm hoping that everything I said to this woman um, made a difference in how she was feeling because it's very easy <clears throat> in that situation to blame yourself. And that's exactly what I did after my husband completed suicide, I blamed myself. And, you know, nine years later, I still blame myself. And this poor woman was just bawling her eyes out, blaming herself. And I had to sit there and try to, you know, <clears throat> reason with a young woman in her darkest, deepest, rock bottom moment and help her realize that this was not her fault. <clears throat> so that's how I started my day yesterday. And, you know, of course I went over to the car where the kids were and I talked to them about TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and stuff like that and made sure that they were okay. And, you know, I know that they're not okay and the family's not okay and they probably won't be for a while, but sorry that this view and the camera work is terrible on this video, but I know this family's not gonna be okay for a while. And, you know, they're gonna need some time to process this, but, <sighs> You know, that's that's one of the downfalls and one of the horrible things that we deal with in um, EMS as a paramedic on top of obviously the main thing in the world right now, which is a pandemic of an infectious disease that is running rampant among people. So we gown up and put our PPE on and our gloves and constantly wash our hands. I mean, I don't know if you could see my hands are so raw they're like beef jerky right now like that's the only um comparison i can give you right now because i've literally probably washed my hands about a hundred thousand times today and <clears throat> i literally can taste lysol down my throat and into my lungs i'm i've been inhaling disinfectant and Clorox and, and all kinds of cleaners and my throat is on fire and the taste in my mouth is just disgusting from cleaning products. So I'm convinced right now that if coronavirus doesn't get me, um, the freaking cleaning products will and the poor atmosphere, you know, in the earth right now is suffering from the aerosol cans that are spraying everything that we have to touch right now. And that's another thing about EMS is that, you know, we're on high alert all, all day. 
So there is no, this is the downsize, the downside of EMS. It's not all glamorous. And you know, like I said, I do love my job, but going back to my day yesterday, okay. The first job was a suicide. The second job was a death of natural causes. And the poor husband was beside himself and he was by himself in the house because the two of them were on social isolation. His family lives in another state and he has to grieve alone. He has to grieve alone because no one's allowed to go and visit him. So this is how serious things are right now. When you think that you don't have to stay home or that you're letting your kids have play dates or you're letting um, friends come over still or you're socializing on the beach or sitting in circles around talking to your friends in a parking lot thinking that you're socially distancing yourself from people you're not just do the right thing and stay home and then my third call of the day yesterday was another suicide so this girl you know I don't it was drug related so I, I don't know why she did it she also was by herself and I don't know anything about her family. No one really knows anything about her, but she it was a suicide. And and then my fourth patient of the day had a fever. That's scary shit. I'm probably going to get, you know, demonetized from this uh, curse word, so I apologize for the for the language, but it's scary. Any patient with a fever or a cough or any kind of travel or anything, it's scary right now. We're scared. You know, so, uh, you know, the safe thing for EMS to do right now is just to assume that every, every person has it. Nobody doesn't have it at this point. Um, And do the best we can to not contract it ourselves and to not take it home. So when I tell you that I'm doing everything in my power, this is how I leave my shift. First of all, I spray, I have this little spray bottle of of rubbing alcohol that's 70% because you need at least 60% alcohol to kill this. But I spray my boots all over them, everywhere. And they don't even come in the house. They stay outside. When I get home, they stay outside. I spray my bag um, that was in the truck and the bag that was in, in the office, in our clean office, with Lysol. I saturate it. So anything that may have landed on my bag gets disinfected before I even put it in my car. So even when I get home, even though I have disinfected the bag, the bag stays outside too. Anything that's with me on my shift stays outside. So coming home, I go into my garage and I my daughter enters through the front door and I enter through the garage. And of course I close the garage door because my neighbors don't need a show. But I strip down to nothing in the garage and my garage leads to my laundry room. The laundry goes right in the washing machine and gets washed immediately. Hot water and soap in the washing machine immediately. And then I tiptoe my ass right upstairs to the shower and I disinfect myself. Wash my hair, wash my body, wash my face so I can finally itch my nose or my eyes and or things that I couldn't touch all day because I am terrified that I will inadvertently infect myself with this scary thing that's going on right now. And we're, like I said, we're scared. And, you know, I'm hoping that we get a hold. Sorry, there's a cop. I'm hoping that we get a hold on this and we start to see a decline in cases and a decline in death soon because being a paramedic and being out here in this environment right now is scary. But... I have to tell you that when we do come to your house and we ask you to wear a mask, it is not because we're afraid of you. It's not because we think you're dirty. It's not because we think you're automatically assume that you're infected, although we have to do that now. We are protecting you from us and we are protecting us from you. And that's the same reason why we wear gloves on every call. We are protecting you from us and we are protecting us from you. So if a paramedic or an EMT or a police officer or a firefighter comes to your aid and asks you to wear a mask when they're standing close to you, please don't be offended because we have to do this right now. Um, So today was relatively uneventful except for the fact that it was my last shift at this company. And I am trying to hold it together right now. 
I don't think it really hit me yet. It hit me when they announced it, but the actual reality of, of it hitting me that this is it hasn't hit me yet. And I'm sure when I go home and I can breathe and relax and exhale after I shower and the tension in my body has left and I pour a glass of wine and I sit down and hug my kid, that it'll hit me. It's starting to hit me now because I'm talking about it, but I have three days off and then I start with my new company and I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited to start a new opportunity and meet new people and, and just work for a fantastic company that I am so excited to work for, but it is bittersweet. It really is. It's bittersweet because I've been here for so long and I grew up here and I was a kid when I got hired and I went through a lot of life events, major life events here. And change is scary, but you know, being that I lost my husband and and had to move and had to adapt to a new life, I'm I'm pretty good. I'm like a damn chameleon. I can adapt to change and I and I'm gonna be fine I just have to process it and it'll take some time to process it because I have like delayed reactions to things sometimes like you know I'll wake up one day and just realize oh my god it's over and then I'll just have a little mini breakdown and then I'll pick up my pants and go on with life that's just the way I deal with things but with that being said I'm excited to start the new company but Ladies and gentlemen, it's the same job. It's the same job. I am going to be a paramedic in the same company. So I will be handling and dealing with the same issues that I'm dealing with now. So the alert and the stress has not been lifted yet. So um, please do your part in this. Stay home. Don't go out if you don't need to. I understand we need to replenish our groceries and our toilet paper and um, stuff like that, but don't have play dates. Don't have friends over. Don't go socialize. You have FaceTime. You have the phone. You have computer skyping or whatever the heck else the kids do nowadays. And I'm showing my age by by saying this because I'm not very techy with stuff. But you have to protect you, and you have to protect us, and we have to stay healthy so that we can help you. God forbid something happens. So thank you for joining me tonight and listening to my rant on my drive home and I have been proudly serving this company for 21 years and I'm I'm sad so I'm gonna go home and shower have a glass of wine and then the next video I post will probably be a little bit more uplifting and happy than this one but anyway I hope everyone has a great night please consider hitting that subscribe button down below and hit the bell notification so that you're notified every time I post Every post is not going to be me ranting in the car on my drive home, but I just wanted to give you guys all a reality um, inside edition version of what truly the paramedics and the EMTs are going through right now during this. So hit the bell notifications, hit the subscribe button, like the video, share with your friends. I'd really appreciate your support and I hope everyone has a great night and please be safe. Take care, guys. Until next time. Bye.